everyone. Um, my name is Angie. Um, and first I apologize if the quality of this video is really crappy because I suck at technology and basically grandma and I don't know how to edit it or make the lighting nice or do any of that stuff. Um, so sorry in advance for that. Um, so I'm making this video because um, the other day on Tumblr I got a message um, that said hey, I remember um, in the past you had talked about how you had a bad coming out experience, but you seem to be in a good place right now, and I wanted to know how you overcome a bad experience. Um, you should make a video. Um, and at first I, I wasn't sure if I should make a video because, I don't know, I just didn't think that it was that relevant or something, I don't know. Um, but then someone else came back and was like, yeah, I think that would be really helpful, so um, please, you should do it. I'd like to know the story. Um, so I guess I'm making this video. Because um, if I can help, you know, one or two people or whatever um, overcome maybe a bad, a bad situation, then that would be cool. Um, so if, I want to say that there definitely are people out there who have come out, you know, no matter what you're coming out as, if you're lesbian or gay or bi or pan or trans or what, you know, um, asexual, um, whatever you want to come out as, um, a Nickelback fan. Um, so I just thought that I would start by telling you my, like, my situation, how I came out, that type of thing, and then I guess I give my two cents on how to overcome it if your situation's not ideal, or um, if you're thinking about coming out, you know, maybe some tips um, to help you facilitate that experience. Um, okay, so I um, realized I was gay when I was about 16 and a half. I... Um, fell in love with my best friend, you know, as the story goes. Typical. Um, so the first people I came out to were my friends and, you know, they were really cool. I mean, obviously that was still like really difficult for me and I was afraid and stuff because um, I hadn't come out to people before or whatever, but they all basically assumed we were dating or in love or something anyway. So they all just didn't really care. Um, the first person I came out to in my immediate family was my younger brother. Um, at the time, he was probably 11, I think. Um, and I had picked him up from hockey practice, and we were driving in the car home, and I was really nervous, and there was, I was, like, shaking and, like, sweating, and, like, I was so nervous, but I just, like, really wanted to do this because, like, yeah, we were, like, five to six years apart, but we're super close. Um, so I just, like, I wanted to do it to, to practice or um, just to tell him because I love him and stuff. Um, and we're driving home, and I turn down the music, and I'm, like, all afraid. And I say in, like, this tiny little voice, I think I'm gay. Is that okay? And he's just, like, yeah, can we get McDonald's? And, you know, at first I thought that was really cool. Like, he doesn't care. Like, he... That's, you know, I basically just told him, oh, yeah, I got to be on a test or, or something, you know, and he just was like, yeah, that's fine. Like, let's go get food. Um, but, I, you know, as time has progressed, I'm, I started to think that he really just wanted McDonald's and was ignoring me because, like, I think he forgot that I came out to him or something. And sometimes I have to, like, remind him. <laughs> um, maybe say he's in denial, but he's also just kind of spacey like that, so I don't really know. Um, but for the most part, I guess that went fine, except for the part where he, like, keeps forgetting that I came out to him. Um, then the second person I came out to was my mom. Um, so when I was growing up, my parents were very, quite obviously, not for gay people. Um, my, my dad was very outspoken about this, and, you know, um... Just, he would say a lot of negative things a lot, and um, that was, you know, pretty hard for me or whatever. So I didn't really know what to do. But um, when I was 19, 
and I was a sophomore in college. I wanted to take a class, um, an LGBT literature class, and I knew my mom would see it on my schedule because she has access to my my account thing. Um, and I know she would see it, and I I thought that she would assume, and I didn't think that was fair. Um, so I decided I, I should come out to her so that I could tell her, you know, this is why I want to take this class, and I didn't want you to assume I wanted you to hear it from me. And... Um, I was really scared, but my mom had never, you know, been as outspoken as my dad had been. Um, she just, she just kind of quietly supported him or whatever, but I don't know. She's also just like a really gentle and kind mom, like the perfect mom, basically. I love my mom so much. Um, she, you know, she, when I told her I, I was crying and it was like a really difficult thing for me. But she was, for the most part, supportive. She was telling me, you know, I don't really understand this. I don't understand why you would, you know, do this with your life. But it's your life. You can do what you want. And I will always love you and I'll support you. And that was really good. So I was, you know, building some confidence. Like, my family, you know, maybe they're not as, you know, closed off as I thought they were going to be. They're, um, it's going to all be okay. Um, but she was like, you know, you need to tell your father soon. And I was kind of freaking out because... My dad, you know, had been very, like, negative about gay people, like, all my growing up and stuff. So I was, like, nervous. And I told um, my mom, like, you know, I don't want to do this. But, she, like, my mom is not the type of person to keep secrets but from my father. But um, I know that she would do this for me because she loves me. And I, I started to feel bad that she was having to keep this secret um, from my dad. Or whatever, and I knew he would be, you know, really mad that if he found out that she had told him and she knew or whatever. Um, still, I didn't mean to come out to him. I came out on accident, which is probably the worst part. Um, when I was, I was almost 20. Um, it was Mother's Day, actually. Um, my girlfriend, you know, who I, my first one, who I came out to, in, or who I discovered in high school or whatever, we'd broken up. Um, and for, you know, months, my dad kept asking, you know, where is she? What's she doing? Like, why aren't you guys friends anymore? Whatever. And, you know, like, it really wore me down. And eventually, I just, like, accidentally was like, we split up. And it was, like, the silence was super awkward. And it wasn't good. And I kind of just, like, awkwardly walked away. Like, I just was like, okay, bye. And, like, just got out. Um, and I like ran upstairs freaking out and I texted my roommate at the time. I think I accidentally just came out to my dad and I'm sitting there. I'm like freaking out. I'm like waiting for her to respond. She's not responding. And I look at my phone. I had accidentally texted. I accidentally came out to my dad to my dad. And um, so this is probably the dumbest thing I've ever done in my whole entire life. How do you accidentally text that to your dad? I don't know. I'm a fucking dumbass. Whatever. Um, yeah. So my dad kind of like disappears for like two days. And he doesn't say anything. And eventually he does come back. And it doesn't go well. It um, it was just really bad. He said some really personal, horrible things to me that, you know, caused a really bad experience for me. It was really traumatic and um just not good in general um so we didn't really speak for a while I kind of went back to college or whatever um we didn't really speak for a while eventually we kind of just started awkwardly talking when I had to see him um it was not ideal as far as that goes, um, and, you know, but eventually we kind of started to build a relationship back up, but I've always had, like, a really rocky relationship with my dad, and, you know, it's still kind of that, and the fact that we can have a sort of relationship is good for me, I guess, but, um, you know, it is pretty fake. Like, we just don't talk about it. It didn't happen. And I know, like, I'm going to have to address this eventually again in my life. And that's, you know, going to suck. Um, 
and I don't know how it goes. So as far as that goes, I think my coming out process is still kind of happening. You know, I'm out, but there's not been a resolution. Um, so how did I, you know, how did I get over this or whatever? Like, it's kind of really sucks when you come out and reveal this, like, this part of you that you can't help or that, you know, you like even about yourself and that you don't even hate about yourself. And then your family hates you and doesn't talk to you and says really, really horrible, horrible things to you. Um, how do you overcome that? <sighs> okay, well, my first tips are one, do not accidentally text your father about your coming out. That's the, probably the first thing. Don't do that. Um, you know, I'd say that was my biggest mistake. <laughs> Um, in general, I would say, you know, you should choose your own method of coming out if that's writing a letter or coming out in person or over the phone or whatever. Like, I personally wish that I would have done it in person. Um, I know that's really hard and stuff and I would recommend to people that they do it in person, but, you know, I definitely have known someone who my friend made his Facebook status, I'm gay, if you don't like it, sorry. And that's how he came out to everyone, including his family. Um, I wouldn't have chosen that way, but like, that's up to any, that's up to you. It's your choice. You are coming out. Um, so you should do it however you want to. Second, if you're going to come out, I think that is essential that you are ready in three ways. Because coming out is really difficult and you may never be ready. Um, I think that if I hadn't accidentally come out, I'm not sure I would have ever been ready because especially if you have really homophobic parents or whoever you're coming out to, you know, they might not ever change unless you come out. And so you're just not going to be actually ready to come out because they are not accepting, but they might not ever be accepting until you come out. It's like a bad cycle. But there are three ways that you can be ready, even if you're, you know, not mentally ready. The first one, you need to be physically ready. Um, I'm not saying, like, you know, you're fit, you gotta run a marathon. That's not that kind of physical. But are you gonna be in a safe environment if you're gonna come out? If you are afraid that you will be physically injured or, you know, you're physically in danger, I recommend that you try to do something else to alter it so you feel safe. Um, I know coming out and being yourself is extremely important and extremely freeing and great to you as a person, but I think s safety is number one, okay? If you're not ready to come out um, and you're not going to be in a safe env environment, maybe wait or maybe, you know, have other people there with you so you can avoid that at all costs. Two, you need to be emotionally ready. Um, yeah, you might like mentally be uncertain if this is right, but do you have an emotional, um, uh, emotional support system? Do you have friends? Do you have roommates? Do you have other family members, family who you already have come out to or whatever? Do you have this support system to help you? Um, Coming out is really difficult, and if it goes badly, especially, you know, that can really wear you down. Um, you need to make sure that you are emotionally going to be able to handle it. Um, I know that's hard to say in advance because maybe you think it's going to go better. Maybe you think you're ready to handle it, and then it turns out you're not. But that's why you have to have your support system so that they can help you and ensure that everything is going to be okay. Um, third, financially, this is difficult because it kind of relates back to the first two. If you are a dependent of your parents and you're going to come out to them and they are going to cut you off, you need to have a plan because otherwise that is obviously going to suck and I, you could be homeless. You might not have things to eat. Are you going to have clothes? Are you going to be able to function as a member of society, um, okay, so you need to either, one, make sure you are financially set, you're good to go. If they, if you get cut off for some reason, you're going to be fine. 
you need to make sure that happens. Otherwise, you got to make sure that you have a plan where you can get to that if something bad does happen. You maybe at least should, you know, make sure you have some income or friends who are willing to, you know, let you move in with them or help you out if you need food or money for anything, okay? Um, because if you aren't going to be able to financially support yourself, you are going to put yourself in physical danger. You are going to not be emotionally able to handle this. So I think that those are the three things you need to make sure before you come out that you are all three of those. Personally, I definitely felt that I was physically, I was okay. I have never really experienced anything bad with that, so I wasn't too worried about that. Emotionally, I had my friends. Um, I had a pretty good support system. Everyone who I was at college and um, my university with was very supportive. I was out to all of my friends. Like, that's not something I had from them. So I wasn't worried. Financially, I was a little scared when I came out to my mom because she is the main source of income for my house. But I kind of just had a feeling I would be okay in that area, even if she didn't like it. Um, so I, I did. And then coming out to my dad, that wasn't really an issue because my mom kind of deals with that stuff and she had already been okay with it. Um, and anyway, I didn't mean to come out to my dad, so that's neither here nor there, I guess. Um, so that's that. If your situation does go bad, you know, you need to lean on your emotional support system. Um, I know it's really cheesy and everyone says it all the time, but it gets better and... I know it's really hard sometimes to see that now, but you can be happy again and there will be people out there who are going to support you and love you for who you are. You just have to find them um, if you don't have them. Um, just, just know that no matter how bad it gets, it can, it can improve. Um, I know that a lot of a few of my friends have had had pretty bad experiences and I've done my best to be there for them and to help them see that, you know, just because someone doesn't like this part of them doesn't mean that the world has to end. Um, heavily lean on your support system and if you need to, distract yourself. Throw yourself into your school, throw yourself into to your work and to your other relationships with your friends or maybe a significant other or other family, whatever, or clubs at your school, um, whatever, your hobbies, reading. Um, I know that it's, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but on Tumblr and stuff, people are really supportive. And if you need a support group, I know you can find some people on there who will support you if you are in a you know, a bad place, or if you locationally maybe are in somewhere that's definitely overall not supportive of you coming out or just being yourself. So I would say don't exhaust your options. Keep trying and you will find, you know, find a support system that will allow you to get back on your feet and to help you and to be happy again. And my biggest thing is yeah, this is a really coming out and being gay or whatever you are, etc. The whole umbrella. Um, yeah, it's like a huge part of you and um, something that you want to share and something that you want to be yourself and like you want to focus on. But it's also just one part of you. There are so many other amazing parts to every single person on the planet. And, you know, focus on those parts of you and people, people love you for who you are no matter what you are or, you know, what crappy bands you like, you know, whatever. Um, you're going to find someone out there who, someone or multiple people who like you for who you are. And you just, you just have to find them. You have to lean on them. Um, and for me, that is the biggest way to get over a bad situation. Um, you just can't focus on this one part of yourself or this one these one, a few people who don't like that part of yourself. You got to focus on the other stuff. You got to rely heavily on your support system and you will be okay. Um, yeah, okay. So sorry this video was pretty long, um, but I guess I had a lot to say. Um, so you can subscribe to my channel if you want. I don't know if I'll ever be making more videos. 
Um, but yeah, I guess. So have a good weekend and, um, you know, hang in there. And I guess if you have any advice, you can shoot me a message on my Tumblr, which is who is Elizabeth Um, and I guess I could give you some more advice if I have it. I'm not that qualified, but I'll do my best to help you through your experience or if you have questions or whatever, just shoot me. I'm all ears. Um, and I'm, I'm really nice. I promise. Um, all right. So yeah, have a good weekend and talk to you all guys talk to you guys all, whatever, <laughs> um, some other time. All right, bye.